thank you very much to the SNP for the opportunity to briefly present this afternoon. And I know I've only got three minutes, so excuse me, first if I talk fast, and two if I just cover the surface of, of what this project is about. Um, and I'm here with my colleague, Professor Heather Kuby. So this project is, is back to the sustainability word. It's moving towards sustainability, looking to strengthen rural health facilities, upskilling providers, developing mentoring capacity, which again, we've just been speaking about, around screen and treat services across Malawi. And we're grateful to the Scottish Government for this new tranche of funding. As, as elo eloquently um, been described by, by Dr Ibe, cervical cancer in Malawi is a tremendous burden, as, as we know. Um, it's got incredibly high incidence and it's got the highest global mortality for cervical cancer with the latest global can figures. And many of these deaths can be prevented through screening, through treatment, screen and treat, um, and accessible surely to where women are. In Malawi, there is a government-supported um, strategy for cervical screening, but until very recently, one of the major challenges was, although there were screening facilities, there often wasn't treatment available. It's, a, it's quite a fast-moving landscape, um, and our project, we feel, is very well suited to take this forward. Um, we're building on a previous Scottish Government funding um, from 2013 to 2016. That was a project you might have heard us speak about before, which sought to provide screen and treat um, facilities using visual inspection with acetic acid, using thermocoagulation for immediate treatment, and robust follow-up pathways for women with lesions that were suitable for radical hysterectomies and also supporting palliative care services that were there. Um, with Malawi Ministry of Health, we, we got support for bringing in a thermocoagulation um, in addition to cryotherapy to Malawi, and that's influencing now WHO global policy um, as, as, as we speak. Hub and Spoke's approach was based in Nkoma Hospital and then went out to rural health facilities, um, working very much with local chiefs, local communities, recognising the need to really engage with communities on the ground and sensitise both women and providers. Um, and working with Reproductive Health Unit colleagues there and engagement with ART clinics. Trained a good number of Malawian healthcare staff. Um, over 22,000 women have been screened. Over 80% of these receive on-the-day treatment and we have follow-up to try and capture other women too. Um, have a, a cohort of women who have been treated with thermocoagulation and are evaluating them going forward. Um, and importantly, in coma staff now provide in-country training on thermocoagulation to other sites across Malawi and in other sub-Saharan African countries, including Baylor um, now. So we've got good links with Baylor um, in Malawi and in Lilongwe. So we've got a new grant, and where's that going? Well, we want to build on this hub and spokes approach that we've used before um, in other areas of both North, South and Central Malawi. Um, we're going to focus on rural health centres. We know the need um, there, not to say there's not need in cities, we know globalisation or, or urbanisation is a big issue too, but we want to complement the global health monies that have recently come into Malawi, particularly around HIV care. So working closely with colleagues um, in Ministry of Health to ensure complementarity of approach and with other organisations that provide cervical cancer screening. Critically, we want to build local in-country capacity for screen and treat. So this is around having a, a greater cadre of trained in-country screening providers. Scottish expertise will be through the Scottish Global Health Collaborative to provide support around CPD. Um, and we hope to develop a programme in-country um, for that to go forward. And critically, it's developing not just immediate capacity, but long-term mentoring capacity. Um, our vision and the vision of our Malawian colleagues is to have a, a cadre, a cohort of Malawian providers who themselves are able to provide in-country training and mentoring to a high standard to keep the service going forward long-term. We're working closely with Ministry of Health, Reproductive Health Directorate, WHO Malawi are on board, and with HIV services through different NGOs who, who are on the ground. Um, and we'll be holding symposiums um, in years three and five where we will be bringing together interested partners. For, well, we'll be doing that from the beginning, but to seek to really have forum in country for shared learning. 
And it's very much respect for partnership, thinking of the SMP's partnership objectives. We, we seek and we've sought um, throughout to be respectful of our colleagues in Malawi and of their needs. This has to be driven by the Malawi health agenda. Um, and we've been fortunate in the new grant that we're extending the work to the north, to DHOs, to CHAM facilities, in the centre to, again, um, NGOs and um, government facilities, and in the south to CHAM and working with university and um, NGOs. Scottish and international partners are also involved. Um, we work with Freedom from Fistula, with Achikonde, with MSF, in Female Cancer Foundation. So we're fortunate that this is partnership. And our aim and um, our impact is, yes, to screen women, to hear the voices of women about the services they want, and ultimately to move, we hope, with colleagues across Malawi to have a cervical screening programme, even if it's just the skeleton of it, if it's in its infancy, that takes women from screening all the way through to treatment, to, of, with, visual, with, with thermal coagulation, but also to have support um, colleagues in country to develop radical surgery, um, radical hysterectomy capacity and palliative care capacity too. And again, working, thinking ahead um, is working with um, advocates of HPV vaccination, etc., knowing that prevention is more than just screening, but for the next generation of young women, it's also around the vaccine as it's coming in, in from early next year. Thank you very much.